Hello, I'm Luxbrush. And this is Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, French Biz Magic, Season 4, Episode 18, Mod Pie. And we have another episode where Pinky is actually being Pinky and not that Pinky. Thank God. <laughs> uh, you mean thanks, Celestia. <laughs> Uh, if you want to go all pony isms on us, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just being silly. It's the tiredness talking. Yeah. Both of us are a little bit tired. Both work today. Uh, and even though I saw that overboard or overdoing it joke going, I still laughed at it. Oh, for the rock candy? <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like only Pinkie Pie could make that much rock candy. <laughs> What I don't understand is if she needed her friends to taste test all of them to see which were the best flavors, why weren't those taste test size batches? Yeah. Oh, and thank God they're cartoon ponies, otherwise they'd all be dying from diabetic shock. White. They were sick enough as it is. Wait, wait, you mean I just ingested rocks? It's a special kind of rock. What kind of rock? It's a secret! <laughs> That does not invite confidence in me, Pinky. I love how they keep using different animations for what actually happens in Pinky's brain. It was fun, but unfortunately it reminded me of the Emperor's New School. Uh -huh. Because Emperor to be, you know, Cusco in the stupid Cusco Academy would do his little fantasy things all in animated pencil drawings on lined paper. I feel sorry for you to have watched that, watched some clips enough that you actually have that in your brain. Because I didn't watch really any of it. Maybe the intro and the start of one episode. I was like, yeah, I can't watch this. The movies are better, even the sequel. <laughs> I give a lot of Disney things a chance, even when I know better. <laughs> oh, I gave it a chance. It's just, I knew almost immediately of, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, no. <laughs> okay, my chance was longer. <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go over here and watch some Rescue Rangers. Or Darkwing Duck. Or Tailspin. You know, cartoons that were actually good from Disney on TV. And we also got some more awesome voice work from Tower of St. Germain when she was being when Rarity was being squeezed by Pinkie Pie. <laughs> she really gave a performance of, I'm being crushed by one of my best friends. Can't really speak. <laughs> uh, I also thought it was nice that we got to see all the pets again, even though they were mostly just background characters. It's still nice to have them included, especially since we've had some episodes that had more focus on them and, you know, showing the bond between pet and owner and the responsibility of taking care of a pet. It was nice to see them included. And now we get the introduction of Mod Pie. So in my head, my brain went, Mod Pie is to Pinky like So Poke Rodriguez is to Speedy Gonzalez. As in complete and utter opposites. But still the same. Because <laughs> she's just crazy. In a different way than Pinkie Pie. Rock. You are a rock. Uh, I was going to get to that poetry. <laughs> also, Rarity's hat. I love how they animated it in such a way that it really gave how much... It, the visuals really gave how much that hat weighed. I know, but the, the gemstones seemed rather unfinished for something that Rarity would have done. Yeah, it was kind of like something out of the Flintstones. Because Rarity works jewels into her fashion designs all the time. And they're usually reasonably sized and cut very well. You know, good clarity, nice size. These were oddly shaped and very large. I like that there was a lot of attention to detail in the episode, like these little tiny things they would do that are kind of just there. Kind of like how Ma takes a bite of her sandwich, and she puts it down, and she moves Boulder over. <laughs> she kind of like nonchalantly does that, and, and then we get Ma eating that rock, and I'm like, oh my god, she has strong teeth. And apparently no sense of taste. It's crunchy. <laughs> blink, 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 blink. And then Pinkie Pie eats a real one. It is crunchy. I'm hoping that the real ones had a streusel topping. <laughs> and I really love the voice performance from the voice actor of Maud. 
just does a really good job of that monotone. I've got no emotion, but I express it. Uh, it would have been very easy for it to be just a true monotone with no emotional inflection whatsoever. So I think it was very well done. And I think doing the voice acting for something that subtle is very difficult. So kudos to the voice actor. Also, is it just me or have they made Angel Bunny a little bit subdued this season compared to other seasons? Because he seems a little bit more... Friendly and less of an ass. Well, that could be a result of Fluttershy's more firm behavior after her Minotaur lessons. Hmm, that makes sense. Especially since we saw her being more as positively assertive with Angel Bunny in the closing of that episode. I like as well that Gummy was riding on Maud's back for a lot of this. I guess Gummy <laughs> likes Maud. I just realized they have the same thing going on. They both express their emotions with nothing. I'm happy. Can't you tell? Well, depending on when Pinky actually got Gummy as a pet, you know, it would kind of make sense for them to get along. Oh, she had Gummy while she was still on the rock farm. Huh, and crocodiles and, wait a minute, no, alligators, well, all species, can live for a really long time, though I'm guessing if Gummy is that old, he must have been a mini alligator, because they grow and grow. Yes, they do, but at the same time, he's also a toothless alligator, so that's not exactly a variant inclined to survive <laughs> in the wild. Yeah. I'm guessing he primarily has a diet of cupcakes. <laughs> well, that might cause a growth problem or stunting. And doesn't Best Friends Rock Candy Nicholas kind of sound like a country song title? A little bit. Because every time they said that, I kept going, God, that sounds like a country song title. I know it's not the title of the episode, but every time I heard it phrased, my brain just went, country song! Every time I was like, everyone's barely meant. It's a little too early to be saying BFS. It should take them a bit longer to be best friends to be able to, you know, make those necklaces and actually mean something. I mean, they even take a point to state that it wouldn't, it wouldn't be right to actually make these things if we're not actually best friends or friends. And I like how they dealt with that and going, you know, we shouldn't do this if we're not really all friends because that's invalidating what's been a very special tradition for Pinkie Pie and Maud. And moving on to the little separate events and rarities in particular... Yeah, Rarity kind of this moment where she assumed something, and you know what that means. Mm -hmm. And now that I think about it, when she says, I'll work my magic on it, it kind of has a double meaning. Yeah, she means it both quite literally in using her unicorn magic and in using her fashion abilities. Personally, I don't think the dish towel really went with what Maud was wearing. But it's very practical, especially for someone who's going to be out looking at rocks. And I think she mostly went with the dish towel because it was kind of a camouflage pattern. Yeah, it was rather rock-like, and Rarity's clothing doesn't really run to rock earth tones. Mm -hmm. Yes, I know there are shiny rocks and gemstones are rocks. Let's not go too far into this, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and now moving on to Twilight and the poetry. <laughs> <laughs> and once again, little details really made this scene for me where Oh, I'd love to hear some of your poetry. And you see her actually think, oh, which one? Oh, this is a nice one. I like rocks. I can't remember it, so I can't quote it exactly, but it was like basically like, I like rocks. Rocks are this. Rocks are awesome. I love rocks. Huh? <laughs> Expression on Twilight, like, what? Oh, and here's another one. It's about rocks. They're all about rocks. <laughs> I actually kind of liked the second one as it was going out. Although I only heard part of it because, you know, it fades out before we get the whole thing. But the second one kind of started to have a, an actual meaning to it other than I like rocks. Because it was talking about solitude, I think, or something like that. Or sen being sentimental about things. Even though it had puns in it. Sedimentary to sentimental to solitude. Yeah, there were a lot of rock puns in this episode. Quite. But I think staying around Maud, you know, they... Uh, all absorbed a certain amount of information about rocks 
Because there's no way that Rainbow Dash knew what an igneous rock was before this episode. That's why she said, ask me how I know that. <laughs> and going back to Apple, the Applejack scene real quick, I love how we get a classic animation of Pinkie Pie going poof! And her smoke cloud is the exact same color and shape as her as she goes back out. <laughs> and once again, now that I'm thinking about it, I think Maud has never peeled apples before. Otherwise, why would you just use a rock? Though I have a feeling if she did peel apples in one way, the apple wouldn't survive with how god dang or celestia dang strong she is. I know, but it's just like, I mean, I know we're kind of doing this more as a joke of how rock obsessed she is, but really? I'm pretty sure that that kind of apple massacre with a rock would have made enough noise that Applejack would have heard that something <laughs> happened before she looked over and went, how's that apple peeling going? That's another thing I didn't think of. I like it when you point out things I don't. You know, if she was supposed to peel the apples, shouldn't there have been a peeler out for her to use? And where did the rock come from? Because it was definitely not Boulder. Boulder is much smaller. Also, every time I heard Boulder, I, I just went right over to Airbender again. I'm the Boulder! <laughs> Maud's definitely an interesting character. I really enjoyed her personality in this episode. It was a very strong contrast. And you know, we went back to the lesson that, you know, friends don't always end up being friends with each other. Which went a little bit better than it did in the Griffin brush off. Which was basically ah. ditch your old friends because they're mean and stay with your new friends. Now on Do Rainbow Dash, and where we first see how freakishly strong Maud is. That was a mushroom cloud from her just throwing a rock. Uh, I loved how impressed Rainbow Dash was with that. And Rainbow Dash's reaction when, you don't care about winning? <laughs> but, but, but winning is everything. That was a great reaction. It was really interesting to me how the part that really got Rainbow's goat was the fact that, what, what, no winning? You, what, huh? She was perfectly fine with Mod up to that point, but then, you know we like winning? Rainbow Dash has problem with you. <laughs> Especially since you just beat me and you don't care. <laughs> uh, this is a good way to solve your problems. If you need to tell your fr friend something that may be uncomfortable, send out the sacrificial lamb. I mean, your default leader. <laughs> then they'll pass it on. Then the default leader will pass it on to someone else. And then that person will pass it on to someone else. And then that person will pass it on to someone else. <laughs> I love how in that scene they just kept passing it off to each other until someone went, well, it, you know, we're not really friends with her. And of course it was honesty. Oh, well, it's difficult to tell your friends something unpleasant, especially if it's going to be something that disappoints them. Because Pinkie Pie was so excited about this being able to do this fun tradition and include all of her Ponyville friends, best friends. Since she's friends with practically everyone in Ponyville. Mm -hmm. In this family tradition that Maud originally taught her. And this is another episode where they actually show Pinkie Pie's range of emotions. Not just, I'm happy all the time. I have other feelings too. Including a great deal of disappointment and sadness. If I ever see Pinkie Pie and her mane is less than fully fluffy, I'm running. <laughs> Yes, that's a good sign. Also, tail twitch. <laughs> For tails of twitching, find something to be under. As long as it's stable. Because <laughs> that might be the thing that's falling. <laughs> and wow, only 200 pounds of rock candy? <laughs> well, we're talking Pinkie Pie, and she's excited. So, of course, she wants everything to be perfect. So, she went a little overboard. Uh, and going back to what you mentioned earlier about Rambo Dash on that little joke... That was a good little joke there, especially with all the rock puns in the episode. Especially with her going, ask me how I know that. I thought it was don't ask me, but I'm not going to nitpick. And two things about Maud rescuing Pinkie Pie. Why did Maud go through the obstacle course when it was probably just a straight run to go straight to her? Because that was more amazing and impressive. And two? And two, holy smokes is she strong! I mean, really freaking strong. She, like, flew through the air, hit that rock, and pulverized it. And all I'm thinking when I was watching this was, like, dang, she's strong, and I see where Pinky gets her powers. 
Yes, Pinkie Pie actually fits in perfectly with her family. She has all the same abilities, she just expresses them differently than the other members of her family. I would definitely hate to be on the bad side of Maud. Ever. Yeah. Because I just saw her going, You did what to Pinkie? See this rock? What rock? Get the point? Yes, ma'am! Also, the line about Maud would move mountains for Pinkie? I think they can also be taken literally. Quite. Uh, to bring more logic back into that climactic scene, we had two unicorns, three pegasi, counting Twilight twice. Nobody could catch the rock with unicorn magic, and nobody could fly up there and pull her away. Rainbow Dash has been established as one of the fastest flyers in all of Equestria. And not just for overall speed, she also has extreme acceleration. Because we've seen her go from zero to God knows what, or Celestia knows what, in like, seconds. Yes, so either this is like how the leaf got in the way of the breezes and nobody thought to do anything, or this is just how fast Maud is. <laughs> well, think about Pinkie Pie and how hard it was for Rainbow Dash to get rid of Pinkie Pie that one time. Pinky was like, Dash? Oh no. <laughs> True. But the problem with that, the scenario of Maud just being so fast that the others didn't really have time to react, is that we clearly see the rock falling. And the others were reacting to it shocked. And maybe the writers expect us to take it for... Oh god, I almost did a rock pun there. Uh... Maybe the writers just took it that we would accept that the others were too shocked to really do anything. Though there's that whole thing of, oh, they've been in worse situations before. <laughs> and often enough that I think they would have been over the shell shock by now. Yeah, you know, doing things like fighting supernatural villains and taking on gigantic timber wolves and... Oh, I don't know, saving the Crystal Empire. But, you know, you have to go back to this is a children's show. The contrast between Pinkie Pie and Maud just made me laugh every time. Every time they like showed Maud in the front going, I'm expressing something, and Pinkie Pie would be in the background doing something silly. They just did that in such a subtle way because she was enough in the background that she, unless you were looking at her directly, you wouldn't really notice her. That where they'd have the joke hit, and then Pinkie Pie would be in the background doing something subtle, and you're like, oh god, that's so funny. <laughs> or in the case of the very end where Maud goes, I express myself differently than my sister Pinkie Pie. And then Pinkie Pie's going, woohoo! and doing cartwheels and throwing confetti everywhere. It's a very strong contrast right there. I like how the train station reminded me, speaking of Flintstones again, the Flintstones. How so? Because it didn't click that way for me. It was all made out of rock and had similar colors to several of the houses, at least to me, of the Flintstones. Mm, well, that makes sense. What I love is how her friends managed to beat her back to the rock farm. Yeah, I'm guessing that was a little bit of twilight magic there. Most likely. We also get the return of the opposable hair, where she's holding the rock candy necklace. Mm-hmm. I really hope Maud comes back in the future. That would be nice. And going back to her pet rock boulder, I'm thinking that this is actually a, some type of living rock. And I know that the authors aren't allowed to read fan fiction, and I'm sure they're not allowed to read the comics. The thought that there could be a living rock, I think for me, was kind of inspired from the Cutie Mark Crusader short story where they found the living rock that could transform into things. I believe it was called a mimic. That sounds right. It's been a little while since I read that. And Maud doesn't have enough of a sense of humor to feed a pet rock. So the casual way in which she pushed Boulder toward the sandwich kind of implies Living Rock. And the fact that I believe Fluttershy actually says that Boulder's kind of sweet, implying that she may have actually had a conversation with Boulder. <laughs> she may have had a bonding moment or may have observed something more than the other ponies did. Though my first thought when they were playing camouflage and Boulder turned out to be in Maud's pocket was actually, oh my goodness, Maud's a troll. <laughs> We're looking everywhere for something. Oh, it was in my pocket. <laughs> Though taking the theory that Boulder is a living creature, all these new ponies, Boulder's a little shy. 
I'm just going to stay right here by the pony I know. The one that doesn't have all these crazy expressions. Oh, wait, I deal with that all the time, her sister. <laughs> and these are kind of two separate points, but they both relate back to the rock candy necklaces. One is that um, Maude must really, really like Pinkie Pie to have taught her this rock candy recipe and have started this tradition of trading necklaces when she doesn't even like candy. I mean, it's sweet at the end where Twilight sees that she actually still has all the necklaces even though she doesn't like candy. But when you think about the fact that Maud taught Pinkie Pie how to make the candy, that's mm. a nice sister. Like, I know you will like this, so seeing you happy makes me happy. So let's do this. Hmm. And the way you said that kind of reminds me of how Pinkie Pie thinks overall. When her friends are happy, she's happy. Mm-hmm. Is the thing that makes her smile the most is seeing her friends smile. Mm hmm So I guess that trait kind of runs in the family. Making others happy above yourself. Quite possible. Be nice to see more of Pinkie Pie's family. Just to see some of the family units overall flushed out. Like some of the ponies we haven't even seen family members of. Fluttershy and Rainbow Dash come to mind. Mm hmm I think the only full family we've actually seen is Rarity... Sweetie Belle and the two parents. Oh, and Twilight's family. I, I think Rarity's parents had more lines than Twilight's parents. You're right, because I don't ha think they've had lines at all. <laughs> they just stood pr pretty in the background going, Oh, look, we're at our son's wedding. Oh, look, we're in a flashback. We were turned into plants. What does what our contract say again about this? <laughs> and the other thing in regards to the candy necklaces is... It seemed a little overboard for the other five to go ahead and give Maud necklaces. I mean, they came to the conclusion that what they had in common was their love and care for Pinkie Pie, which is fantastic. You know, that's common ground to start on. Yeah, it's a good starting place. Yes, but it's a starting place. Traditionally, in this type of episode, that's more used as, okay, this is what we have in common is that we care about this person. We will work together to make this person happy, regardless of how we feel about each other, because we care about this person. That's either the beginning of a friendship or the setting up of an alliance. It's not enough to turn around and make and give candy necklaces. If you notice, Ma didn't give any necklaces back, so on her side, it doesn't seem to have gone that far, even though they came to the agreement at the rock farm that what they have in common is that they all care about Pinkie Pie and that that's very exciting. So I think Maud has a better perspective on that of that's more of a basis for friendship or alliance. We're not suddenly BFFs because we both love my sister. Though I'm impressed with Rainbow Dash's ability to make a rock candy necklace that looks like her cutie mark. Yeah. <laughs> also, they imply that it's apparently heavy. Well, considering the marks, it's kind of gouging, and that the secret ingredient in Pinkie Pie's rock candy is rocks, I would imagine it's kind of heavy. And going back to the rock candy real quick, I don't ever remember really chewing on rock candy. I always remembered kind of just licking it or letting it dissolve in my mouth. They kind of implied they were chewing it. Mm, well, some people chew hard candy. I didn't have rock candy very often. I thought it was more pretty than anything. And it mainly tasted just like sugar, so... Mm. I was always more of the school of candy equals chocolate. <laughs> I think the most of the world would agree with you. And even though I don't think they should have given mod necklaces, I think it was a nice touch that they were all different and somewhat reflective of the personalities and artistic tastes of each pony. Yeah, I noticed that too, how each one kind of fit each one of the pony's personalities. I'm surprised Twilight's, all the rock candies weren't like even or something. <laughs> I would have kind of expected that, but at the same time, rock candy is naturally supposed to be rather rough and rock-like. 
And she probably spent all her time helping Rainbow Dash pull that one off. This episode really showed a lot of great contrast moments between Pinkie Pie and Maud and how the personalities and interactions with each other really show off how they're sisters, but how they each behave differently and express things differently. There was a lot of little animation moments that really, really gave off bits and pieces of the personality of Maud, and also animation touches that really showed things that you usually don't get to see in a kid's cartoons. Like, they showed weight of objects, like how wobbly and heavy Rarity's hat was, and it really showed off the artist's talents by doing that. Though, to me, the lesson was a little bit fuzzy, but I got the general of it. Overall, I really enjoyed this episode. Mainly because of Maud. Well, I would hope because of Maud, since she's in the episode title, and I believe you pointed out that she was actually retcon, so hopefully we like her. Though I would have liked to have seen her cutie mark. Apparently if you slow down one of the animations, you can actually see it. And of course, it's a rock. Well, of course it's going to be a rock, but you no, know, what kind of rock? I mean, they work on a rock farm. So of course it's going to be a rock, because everyone who works on the apple farm... <laughs> uh, I really did enjoy this episode. It's nice to see Pinky have some bonds with her family, you know, since she does live in Ponyville, and, you know, her family is far away. I agree with you that the lesson was a little muddled, and I think we went from, oh, hi, to BFFs way too quickly. I mean, I know you only have 22 minutes to resolve the episode, but you have how many episodes in a season? You could start writing letters to each other. You know, we had a whole episode about communicating with people at a distance and staying in touch. If you like what Lux and I have been doing here, please subscribe. Also, we, we'd like more comments, please. Just try not to be too mean. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to see high-quality versions of Lux's finished images, you can check him out over on DeviantArt. And if you actually want to keep track of the progress we're making on these episodes, you can find him over on Tumblr. Links in the description. This has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 4, Episode 18, Mod Pie.